In this video, let us look at one important part of chemistry that usually comes in an exam and you need to know this part before you go in an exam. But please, if you've not subscribed to this YouTube channel, consider doing that so that you do not miss out. Okay, so we are going to look at oxides. So this video, we are going to discuss oxides. So the part that you are going to look at are oxides. So the first question is that, what is an oxide? What is an oxide? So an oxide, an oxide, uh, you can say is a compound. So an oxide is a compound formed. So a compound formed when, um, when oxygen combines. So when oxygen combines. with other elements so when oxygen combines with other elements they form oxide now quickly let us look at the types of oxides what are some of the types of oxides so for the types of oxide let's say a acidic or acidic yes acidic oxides so types of oxide we have acidic oxide now what are acidic oxides so acidic oxide are formed so you can say they are formed when oxygen they are formed when oxygen reacts with non uh, metals so these are oxide forms when uh, oxygen react with non metals what are some of the examples of acidic oxide so for example of acidic oxide so examples of acidic oxides so examples of acidic oxide we have one carbon dioxide then we have nitrogen dioxide we have sulfur dioxide okay but as you study don't just limit yourself to this now since you are saying acidic oxide are formed when oxygen react with non-metals and why they are called acidic oxide i mean why they are called acidic oxide because they dissolve in water to form acids so these oxide that you are able to see here when they dissolve in water they form acid for example Carbon dioxide, when it dissolves in water, it forms uh, a weak acid, which is called carbonic acid. And this is the component of many uh, sodas that we see on the market or carbonated drinks. Then, of course, nitrogen dioxide, it forms nitric acid. Remember the process of nitri uh, nitric acid formation. So it forms nitric acid. Then when sulfur dissolves in water, it forms uh, sulfuric acid. Okay? It forms sulfuric acid. So these are examples of acidic oxide so acidic oxide are uh, oxide formed when oxygen react with uh, non metals as you can see carbon nitrogen and of course sulfur reacting with oxygen the other type of oxide that we can look at perhaps the second part we can look at uh, basic oxide okay basic oxides now what are basic oxides what are basic oxide so these are oxide formed um these are oxide formed when, um, so you can say these are oxides formed, just write it nicely, formed when oxygen react with the metals. So when oxide, oxygen react with metals, especially group 1 and group 2 metals, okay? So it form um, basic oxide. Now, why are they called basic oxide? They are called basic oxide because when they dissolve in water, they form um, alkali solution or they form a basic uh, solution, okay? So we can say soluble basic oxides soluble basic oxides dissolve 
ini water to form what did i say they form alkalis okay what are examples of uh, basic oxides so examples so please you need to master these examples or you need to know them so examples of basic oxide we have potassium oxide we have sodium oxide we have magnesium oxide and so on and so forth okay then the other type of oxide that we have is amphotelic oxides so see we have amphotelic oxides why are they called amphotelic oxides so these are oxides of metals okay so you can say are uh, oxides of metals okay so some metals they form amphotelic oxide but like i said basic oxide most of them from group one up to group two then other metals also they form what we call amphotelic oxide now the term amphotelic um it shows that they they show both basic and acidic properties so you can say they are called amphotelic oxide because they show both basic and acidic uh, properties that is the reason why they are called amphotelic now what are some of the amphotelic oxides so examples of so let me say examples of amphotelic oxides so we have one zinc oxide zinc oxide so zinc oxide is an amphotelic oxide and i said they are called amphotelic oxide because they show uh, both characteristics of basic and acidic so we have read two oxide as well which is pb o then third one we can look at aluminium aluminium oxide otherwise written as z this so these are some of them that you can look at that uh, are amphotelic but of course as you study you get to look at uh, some more okay then of course the last part we can discuss that is d part we can look at uh, neutral oxides so as the name suggests they are neither acidic nor um they are neither acidic nor basic so these are oxide of non metals are oxides of non metals so some metals they form acidic oxide some of they form uh, neutral oxide and of course for metals some they form basic other they form amphotelic oxides now what are some of the examples of neutral oxide and they are called neutral because when they dissolve in water they form a neutral uh, solution for amphotelic which means they form acidic sometimes they behave as acid sometimes they behave as uh, basic i guess you get that now what are some of the examples of neutral oxide so you have carbon monoxide so carbon monoxide is an example of neutral oxide then to we have nitrogen nitrogen oxide is an example of um, neutral oxide then we have water which is h2o is an example of neutral oxide so these are some of the examples that we can look at but of course please as you study make sure that you research for some more so this is what you need to know on um, oxides so these you need to master them now let us look at uh, one of the question that we get let us look at one of the question we see how question uh, comes okay so here is the question that we can look at after learning uh, after having a quick uh, recap on oxides so the first question reads 
Aluminium oxide reacts with both dilute hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Remember, hydrochloric acid is an acid. Then, of course, sodium hydroxide is the basic. Now, or is the base. In the presence of water, what term is given to such an oxide that behave like that? Aluminium oxide reacts with both dilute hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. In the presence of water, what term is given to such an oxide which behave like aluminium oxide? So the term that is given to this is called amphotelic, amphotelic oxides. State another oxide that behave in this similar way or in a similar way like aluminium oxide. So in short, they are telling us to give another example of an amphotelic oxide. And we have Pb. O, which is um, lead to oxide and zinc oxide. So these are some of the examples. You just get to pick one. Then C, state the type of reaction that occur between aluminium oxide and dilute hydrochloric acid. Now, in this case, aluminium oxide is behaving as a base. And of course, we have an acid. So this is the acid-base reaction. And it is called neutral neutralization uh, neutralization reaction construct the balance equation to show the reaction of aluminium oxide and dilute hydrochloric acid so if uh, it's an acid based reaction we are going to say aluminium oxide react with HCl in this case what is going to form is a salt which is a uh, aluminium uh, chloride plus water molecule. Now, to balance this, to balance uh, the equation, we are going to uh, put a 2 in front of aluminium oxide. Then we also put a 12 in front there. Then we put uh, a 6 in front there. Then also a 4. Okay. So please uh, try to see if this is the balance equation okay so that is how we write the balanced chemical equation state two uses of aluminium and the properties on which the use depends on state two uses of aluminium now one of the use of aluminium it is used in making aircraft component so one making aircraft components now why is it used to make air craft component because here they're saying use and its property so because let me say because it's a uh, less dense and light that is the reason why it is used to make air component then it is used so i'm putting the second one used in making cooking pans or pots Okay, because it is a good conductor of heat and um, electricity. So I use in making cooking pans because, uh, I mean it's used in making cooking pans because aluminium is a good conductor of heat and electricity. And of course the other question that you can answer is uh, account for non-reactivity of aluminium. So account for non-reactivity of aluminium despite it being a metal so that question get to answer it and put your answer in the comment section so that all we can learn are from you i guess you've gotten the question then question e by carbon dioxide which is uh, i'll just write ch2 i mean co2 and water belong to different types of oxide so we have carbon dioxide and CO2 belong to two types of, I mean, different types of oxides. State the type of oxides to which each of uh, them belong. So carbon dioxide, if you look at the types of oxide, it belongs to acidic oxides. Then water belongs to uh, neutral oxides. Okay, so that is what you needed to write. So you've seen that everything that I've explained uh, is varied. So whatever I've explained is a varied information. And also please um, get to study the part that you feel uh, you still need uh, things to catch up. 
Otherwise, as we revise, we are making final touches. So don't miss out this opportunity. We've come to the end of the lesson. So please, as always, if you are interested in the online lessons, uh, make sure to get in touch on the number 0976 402563. Otherwise, see you in the next one.